From alien news stories to mysterious disappearances, here are your top 10 terrifying events that took place on Halloween. In our number 10 spot, we have War of the Worlds. On Halloween Eve in 1938, people thought that aliens had come to Earth. This story is nuts. In 1938, way before movies and TV shows and radio programs became what they are today, 12 million people tuned into a radio program on CBS radio that declared that Martians have invaded New Jersey. <laughs> it was a radio play called War of the Worlds by Orson Welles, who acted in it and wrote it. Very few people knew it was a play though, and it created mass hysteria. It is predicted that 1 in 12 people believed it to be real, approximately 1 million were terrified, and ran out of their homes and panicked over an alien invasion. <laughs> but honestly though, that must have been really scary to hear and not know what to do. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to smash that like button because it really helps us out. In our number 9 spot, we have a fascist celebration. On Halloween in 1922, Mussolini, the Italian politician of the time, threw a party to celebrate the growing power of the fascist party. This happened in Rome with thousands of men who dressed in black shirts, which was a part of the party's uniform. The pictures are insane to see. I've said to myself that if I ever find myself in a place surrounded by hundreds or thousands of people all gathered for the same purpose or person, then I will ask myself, do I think like everyone else here? <laughs> Have my thoughts been manipulated in some way to appeal to a core basic human need that we all need, which is to be accepted and to belong? I'm sure the answer to the last question will be yes, let's be real. <laughs> Apparently it was this day that Mussolini violently took control of the government which led him to becoming prime minister and then the dictator. This event became known as the March on Rome. So yeah, this is definitely some pretty crazy history for the Italians and certainly a terrifying event. In our number 8 spot we have a terrifying prediction. Apparently American serial killer David Berkowitz predicted a killing while inside the correctional facility that he was in and no one of course paid attention to it and thought he was making up a story. Typical, but also he was a prisoner which I'm sure most assumed to be clinically insane so it makes sense why they wouldn't have listened. They didn't realize until Halloween morning in 1981 when two people named Elizabeth Platzman and Ronald Sisman, who were found dead in their Manhattan home, brutally killed. Apparently, Berkowitz described their apartment perfectly and said that a cult had carried out these killings. No one was ever able to find out who killed these people, so many believe Berkowitz's prediction to be true and believe that probably this cult was very powerful and that's why no one was ever found to be connected to the killings. I'm sure that happens way more than we think. In our number 7 spot, we have Nima Louise Carter. In 1977, on Halloween night, a 19 month old by the name of Nima Louise Carter was stolen from her bed. The windows were locked, and so the parents believed that whoever took her was hiding in her closet. Almost a month later, she was found dead in a refrigerator in an abandoned home. Before this incident, two twins from nearby went missing and were found in a refrigerator, and they were believed to have been taken by a woman that ended up being Nima's babysitter. So eventually with this new evidence, the babysitter by the name of Jacqueline Rubidoux was given a life sentence in prison for the killings. In our number 6 spot we have Orange Socks. This is a pretty wild story but a little gruesome so brace yourself. A woman in her 20s was killed on Halloween night in 1979. She was found severely injured and naked but the only thing that was on her was orange socks. The police could couldn't identify her, so that's how she was given the name Orange Socks. She was found just off of Interstate 35 outside of Georgetown, Texas, where it's possible that a notorious serial killer possibly was. I am referring to Henry Lee Lucas. He eventually confessed to the crime, stating that the girl's name was Joni or Judy. He was sentenced to death for it, but apparently he then retracted the confession in order to get his death sentence suspended. He was apparently notorious for admitting to crimes he didn't commit 
it, so whether he did so or not still remains a mystery. In our number five spot, we have poisoned candy. Okay, this one might haunt your dreams a little, or at least make you weary about the candy you may eat going forward. There was a young human that went trick or treating one Halloween night, and after getting home and beginning to eat his candy, he passed out and died. He of course ate a piece of candy that was poisonous and that's what killed him. But that's not the worst part. Apparently, this wasn't a fluke. This boy was poisoned by his own father. Apparently his father really needed money and so he took this as an opportunity to cash out a life insurance policy that he had on his son. Yeah, that is definitely bone chilling. I'm gonna be weary of the candy I eat for the rest of my life going forward now. <laughs> in our number four spot we have the Hilton surprise. On Halloween morning in 2004, a Hilton employee in Key West, Florida experienced the surprise of her life when she found a newborn dead in a garbage bag. Probably the most horrific thing I have ever heard. It still had its umbilical cord attached. Its mother was most likely a pregnant woman that was seen walking into the hotel with three men earlier that morning. A witness overheard moaning in the bathroom and asked if the woman was alright. All three of the males waited outside of the bathroom for her and one of them even called out to her calling her Samantha or Sonia, that's what the witness said. The woman was in the bathroom for about 40 minutes before she and the three men were escorted out by security. Security. She apparently was holding her stomach in pain, but told the guard that she had been partying too hard the night before. She and the men were never found. In our number three spot, we have the tragedy on ice. On Halloween night 1963, in a skating rink in Indiana State Fairground Coliseum, Indianapolis, a tragedy occurred around 11 p.m. that night. It was apparently the last skating routine of the show when the concession stand exploded and the floors caved in, which caused a crater. Gas had been leaking from the concession stand, and that is what led to the explosion. 74 people died and 400 were injured from the event. It was said that the aftermath was a nightmare to see. I can only imagine. In our number two spot, we have Stephen Damman. It was Halloween in 1955, and a woman by the name of Marilyn Damman took her son Stephen and her daughter Pamela to a supermarket in East Meadow, New York. She left her son and daughter outside while she was shopping. It was the 50s, so I guess that was normal then. Comment below if you were alive then and can confirm that this was normal, because it doesn't seem normal. Especially if one of them is still in a stroller and Steven was. When she finally left the store, she discovered that they were missing. She eventually found her daughter, but she never found Steven. Apparently during this time, it was common that people were taken by people that couldn't procreate and they were given different names. Even still today, a body hasn't been found and so it is believed that Steven is out there somewhere just living someone else's life. Oh, imagine. In our number one spot, we have Harry Houdini's death. Okay, I know what you might be thinking, Melissa. Harry Houdini's death is not terrifying. No, no, I suppose not. I mean, perhaps for his family, it might have been terrifying. But what could potentially be terrifying about his death is the possibility that he was actually magical. Out of the 365 days in a year that he could have passed away, of course it's on Halloween. The day of the dead, the witch's holiday, a magical night. I don't know, is this a coincidence? Possibly, but I think not. Some people think he was killed by the spiritualists, an organization he would apparently try to debunk, but there's seemingly no proof of this. I'm Melissa Malati, and I hope that you have a good day, sir.